you're putting Cheerios in a, in a toilet bowl and you're seeing if you can pee on them. Just don't get it on the, on the seat. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cartier. I am, we are. Penn State. And this here is Frank looking glorious as ever. And we've reached uh, first Friday. Of September. No, we didn't. That was last Friday. <laughs> oh, right, because it's nine. It's nine. That Can't was the September 2nd. Darn it. It's too early for a first Friday. It's... How do you even enjoy You didn't even know it was September at that point. No, you didn't. I'm. Is it? I feel like first Fridays are a lot more of a thing now. This it's like September rolls around. Yeah. Does anyone care about summer first Friday? No, you lose track of time in the summer. Maybe that's one of the reasons. It's like you're getting out of summer every day is Friday. That's right. And so once you get out of that, you got to start making things. Right. And then it gets too cold. The first Fridays don't even hit as well anymore. No. So then that's when you need big holidays. Right. Thanksgiving, Christmas. Get you through. Yeah. It's all about getting you through. That is true, though. And 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 um, I found that in life. I didn't know it before, but now I found out what is this like i used to think um sports were professional sports were dumb okay and i would say they're so dumb like okay we're rooting for a team and you pick a team and people get so happy and excited and they put on the paraphernalia and um and then i realized it puts it puts some brightness in people's lives yeah it's all about getting through so like it's like decorating your prison cell like decorate it you know yeah all those pictures i just did i uh, started a fantasy or no I, I joined a fantasy team for the first time in my life mm. do you know what fantasy football is mm, no but i've heard about it i never played it before this mm-hmm. fantasy football is you you have like a group of 12 people okay and you all draft players from any nfl team mm-hmm. to get say 10 players okay and then depending on how well each player does each year you week you're matched up against another team and whoever is people get more points they win and oh, if you win okay. if you win each week you're the usually so they like, keep track of points for people i didn't even know that yeah i mean mm-hmm. you don't do any of it once you're you're signed up you're just watching you can like trade people and stuff but you are now those are your players and you, you maybe have a little pool of money you give 20 dollars in if you win you get 200 dollars. so this is this fantasy this is the beginning of fantasy football season yeah so you can't jump in later it's not double dutch. You no, got to start. No, if if this, that's the whole idea, it's like you can think who's going to be the best player, mm-hmm. but it might they might they get hurt. That would be fair, right? And um, so this is my first time doing it. Before now, I've always been a sports fan, mm-hmm. but casually, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll watch the Eagles because you know camaraderie, and, and I want to see them do well. But there's only been a Thursday night game so far, which okay. was yesterday. But already, I see the joy in it. Mm-hmm. Take out all of the intensity people bring where. It's like they obsess over it and they have spreadsheets and stuff. I was watching a game that I am not a supporter of the teams playing. I would never watch it normally, but now I'm invested because right. I I had the one quarterback. He was my quarterback for my team. Okay. And so I was watching him do well. And it brought a little joy. Like right. it, it made something interesting that wasn't. Just like a, a kid when you turn something into a game right. to make them enjoy it. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's you. You make you feel like you're a part of something, right? And everyone wants that's whole part. That's the whole idea, right? Just feel it like is. you're part of something. So, do you have to pay to get in? This league, it, you don't have to pay to get in. Like that makes it seem like there's a higher power, but we're all friends. Like uh, entity, oh, for the pot for the for the winning pot. Yeah, the the what we did we did it through ESPN, um, fantasy, and then in a group chat it was like, oh, do we all want to put twenty dollars in? Okay, and. So it's not like there's no fees or anything, right. and then the you know the winner will get the com- or first three places will get a communication of that own money. Okay. But then even besides it, it's like you're you're paying twenty dollars, but you're having fun because you put a little more skin in the right. game. Right. And did the Eagles win on Thursday? Eagles didn't, Thursday night only one team ever plays, and then Sunday night is like the big day where most teams play, and then Monday one team plays. So you're, when you said they played last night, you weren't talking about the Eagles. No, oh. and then that's what I'm saying. It was, okay. it, was, okay. it was the Bills and the um, the Bills and the Rams. Okay, my quarterback for my team is the Bills, um, the Bills quarterback, and so I was watching the game and cheering him on, and uh, it makes it fun, it makes life fun. And what if someone else picked it? Picked the um, picked the 
same quarterback. Well, that's the other. I mean, is it up for dip? Like, is it, you, they can't have that guy now because you have the guy? Yeah. It's, oh, they so, can't. So that, that, like, that's the other excitement about it. It was before the games even started on Wednesday night. There was a draft, and we're all on the computer. Oh, how fun! And so it's like I had the third draft pick, and then it, like it cycles through, and so you're there hoping that your guy's still there, and oh, someone takes him. You gotta take the next guy. It, it, Did anyone get Nick Foles? No, I don't think he's that that high of a. Um, it's his eleventh year. Yeah, well, your favorite. I, I do love eleven. <laughs> you know, it's all based on okay. certain aspects. Yeah, so I get it. I I have the best quarterback in projected in the draft. Okay, it's because he's a he's like a run first guy. He'll he'll score touchdowns himself. Run first, ask questions later, kind ask of guy. Qu- <laughs> ask questions later. Oh, but, fun. Okay. Yeah. So to your point, uh, there Holidays is there is little. Stuff. The novelties that from the outside may seem like what's the point you're pretending like players that could care less about you are your team mm-hmm. but it's you're, you're making something fun for you yeah you're putting cheerios in a, in a toilet bowl and you're seeing if you can pee on them just don't get it on the on the seat do you, do you all do that at your school no, well my kids are too young they're too young yeah okay. they, they, they got the old diapers or half of them do but i don't handle any of that okay i let uh i let miss gloria do that <laughs> okay I stay. I stay away from the um, changing diaper duty. Diaper <laughs> no diaper duty. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We were, we were talking about this with my sister. It's when they hire people. Um, this is going to be a little man versus woman thing. It just seems like women are born knowing how to change diapers. Is that true? No. Like I feel like when no. they is it not? No. You do you remember your first diaper you ever changed? I am. I was born, like, you know, someone's naturally musical. You were born changing diapers? You were yeah. in diapers yourself changing diapers? Changing my diapers. own diaper. You know, people are like naturally musically inclined or like naturally, yeah. um, you can cook, you know. Uh, I, na- I I was born a natural um, b- baby care for a person. You should come work on that. I should. I really should. Um, but no, there's lots of girls who I don't know the first thing um, about. Any of it, so I don't. But 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 are they outliers? I don't know. I I never I never knew. Who I knows? don't know. Who I don't knows? know. I mean, it's not hard once you figure it out. No, dad, <laughs> dads do it. Yeah, it's not hard. Um. Yeah, I just uh, I have no interest. Yeah. But that's enough about potty talk. Uh, how you guys doing? It's a beautiful Friday. Well, you know, it's um, it's gonna be a full moon tonight. But a lot of spooky things are happening. We just ran into a rabid moose. A moose. <laughs> A rabid moose would be. They should make a movie out of that. Like a, a rabid moose. Yeah, they'll, they'll they'll call it the Mad Moose. Um, we did see a very strange raccoon in the daylight. You're not supposed to see raccoons in the daytime. Very so that was bad the luck. First, no, it's a red flag of they're nocturnal animals. What's going on? And then, God forbid, it attacks you because uh, rabies goes to their mind and makes them mental. Yeah. But that's not what I was going to say. I was going to say we're still worried. We're still not worried, but we're still um, dealing with the Queen Elizabeth. Um, the Queen Elizabeth uh, uh, exit. Pass, exit. Exit. The 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 the, the, the great Brexit. Remember Brexit. I do remember it. Um. Yeah. And so now we have King Charles. King Charles and Queen Camilla, which she wasn't going to take. She was planning. They, you know, they have all this plan. Though the woman was ninety six. To be um, princess, another word. Really? Like consort? Prince, princess consort, Camellia, or whatever. As to, you know, you, you really don't get queens that often. Right. V- pretty rarely, actually, without a king. Usually, because yeah. when a king becomes a king, their wife becomes queen. But when a queen becomes a queen, her husband does not become king because then like hierarchically that would make a higher title than yeah than him right she's been so known as the queen and stuff princess camille was like i would not feel right having the name queen hmm. after you right like really you heard this yeah firsthand <laughs> but um queen elizabeth not that long ago like 5 weeks ago requested like I I humbly would like for you to take Queen. Okay. Take the name Queen. Wow. Like I would be honored if if you 
carried on wow a queen and so i thought that was a, a very nice gesture so her. nice and i mean on both sides like, I, yes. I, I really i like i like that whole exchange I, absolutely I, I like that, that bound of the hat not like too bad for you my husband's king and i'm gonna be queen you know who would have taken it that megan markle <laughs> you're right though she would have been respectful um today charles who has been prince charles up to this point he was the prince of wales <coughs> not w-h-a-l-e-s but the country of that'd be a lot cooler i just imagine him like having a, a saddle on yeah a whale. no so he he was the prince of wales and um charles prince of wales he's now king charles the third and um instead of saying god save the queen now we're saying god save the king. weird isn't it i know and the song's different there hasn't been a king in about a hundred years wow and so a hundred a little less than a hundred but you get the idea yeah long time and um so, so he gave his first speech today. I heard it. Uh, was he wearing all the garb? No, he wasn't. I was. I wanted him to come out in. You know how his mother was famous for the the matching colored hats and coats. You wanted her yes. to wear that same kind of yes. outfit. How great would that have been to see him talking and he has on the the hat and and like a pastel coat? Because also it would make the transition easier for us. It wouldn't be so stark. If we, if we really squinted our eyes, it'd be like, is that yeah. her? Yeah, because it's they, probably gain a family resemblance <laughs> resemblance and um he didn't he was in a suit which is way less exciting to look at but i loved his speech oh uh, yeah i loved his speech because he was just so kind and he talked about you know how he's going to be there for the country and everything but first person he talked about was camilla and he said my his wife oh his wife he said you know she's been because i think they've been married 17 years at this point you know because Again, we talked about yesterday, Princess Diana, and people, you know, felt a bit sour about Camilla because he had kept a relationship with her even when he was married yeah. to Diana. But it's like right out of the box, the king is kind of like, and you, you, my queen, you know, my my wife who has been my support and will continue to support me to be a great king. I thank her for everything. And I was like, beautiful. He spoke on her. Then he talked about, William and Catherine, who is his son, um, in the line of succession, he gave them his. You are you are now the Prince yeah, of Wales. Yeah, like formally. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. You move up. Yeah. He, well, you keep you. It's kind of like you keep. I think they still have the Duchess. Uh, you know. Uh, you just add on. Yeah, you add on, but but it's very it's it's a higher yeah thing to be the Prince of Wales. So he gave William Prince of Wales, and then he did mention Harry and Meghan. Really? Yeah, he said because he said um. He said what he's going to do and he's going to be supported by his wife. And then he said what William's going to take on all the stuff that that, that Prince Charles is leaving because he, he's, he even said, I have been doing charity for 50 years with these organizations mm. because his mom's been queen so long. Yeah. And now it's like, I'm sorry, now I have to go be king. So William's going to pick up the slack. So he said that. And then he said, and... um. My son, Harry, and his wife, Megan, will continue to live their life overseas. I, I, on their own accord, I like it. Um, obviously, yesterday, we didn't really get into it. We're not going to get into our our hot takes on yeah. the subject. But personally think that the family loved and cherished both their son and his wife and Maybe a little bit of the wife who wanted a bit more. Maybe it was a little too boring for her. Yeah, too different. Whatever Culture it is. Culture shock. But the, what I always say is there's only, like, there's only one way to ever prove anything, and that's through genuineness. Yeah. It's it's be steadfast, and this is all, this always can be your home. It will always be my son. Yeah, yeah. Your, your wife is, is always part of the family since mm-hmm. you married in, and then all you know, smear campaigns over across the pond, it's... It looks a little more tasteless, right? Of like, you're mad at those people that are nothing but we wish them the best for you. I love it. So um, he did that, and I watched all day. He did that. He ate that all day. Yeah, that's a new thing now. People are saying he ate that. He ate, yeah. yeah. Um, all day the House of Commons, which is which is like our, you know, our rep- our House of Representatives. It's they have the same. <laughs> we probably, <laughs> I'm guessing, we copied off of them. We have the, they have a House of Commons and they have all the different representatives. And oh, is that like the funnest thing that you say? When they shout that, out and stuff. Oh my yeah. god, that is better 
than any entertainment television. Yeah. It is so good. I know. It is like scripted. Well, they weren't like, doing that, obviously. No, it was, I know. It was, yeah. <laughs> but did you see the one where it was like these two women talking, the new woman parliamentary leader? Oh, really? Already? And, yeah. And then they're, they're just like, they're so cheeky with each other. Yeah. And just like everyone's standing up like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. And like they're making like comedic level. Yeah, they do. Clapbacks. They do. Like the prime minister. Yeah. Just in the middle of this super crap. It looks like they're all like crammed in there. I know, really. It is so good. Yeah. So today they left it open all day and it was broadcast where each one got to speak about the queen. Oh, that's nice. Say their memory. Say, and so they would say like, um, you know, my the name, I represent the Yorkshire district. And then they would say, you know what I'm saying? And it w- was interesting. England's kind of a small country, but yet all the different accents. Yeah, you know what? From all the different I was places just in England. watching a linguist. And Scotland and Wales and and Ireland. You would think it was the opposite. But I was just watching a linguist speak. He was talking about accents of America. And um, he, he was saying the longer a country is around, the more dialects you'll get. That's why England has so many. Oh, really? Where you would think it would all meld together. Right. Maybe now is different because of um, social media. Yeah. So I don't know if this will continue on as a trend, but the reason why the UK is so small but has just as many dialects as you I feels like America has um, is because of how long it's been around. I think they have more. They might. Ah. I think they have more. I'm telling you. They're, well, because, yeah. The, the, well, if we talk of UK, because you, ha- you have to think of different places in Scotland and then you have Ireland, uh, and then you have Wales, and then you have. Well, it depends how how nitty how, how nitpicky you were being about the U.S. Like, if you went for a Southern accent, it would be different than if you're saying, you know, like a Florida accent, a well, Tennessee accent, a yeah, I guess so, uh, Dallas accent. But is that noticeable to other people? Because I feel in England, I can hear like that sounds different from that, from that, Probably from that. Not. I don't. I think from other people, they kind of think America sounds like New York, down south or Midwest. Yeah, or That's Valley it. Girl in California. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get into it because we're, we're. Oh my we goodness! Always, we always get lost Hurry talking up. about the Queen, guys. It is Hurry Friday. Up. We've for the first time in how long we got through a full week. I don't know. Maybe if I if I post this in time. I know. Um, we've got through a full week, so that means we've had a one word Wednesday. We've had a walk through Thursday, and today, by golly, we're gonna have a Doctor Seuss Friday. Yes. What do we do on Doctor Seuss Friday? We read a Doctor Seuss. We read book. a Doctor Seuss book. We love Doctor Seuss. We love him, and um. We find such an interest in reading his books as adults because he had such a way with words. Yeah, he was a he was a a, a word wizard, I know. A, a word word smith, uh, a wordist. Yeah, and um, or just a uh, his imagination. Imagination. People, yeah, people, for sure. People say you know, oh, a child's imagination. Look at this adult's imagination. Things people wouldn't think of. Inside all of that, that pulls you in and keeps you entertained is are these meanings that are great for kids that they don't even realize they're getting. We talked about it earlier. Why did we were talking about? What was the analogy that I said? Oh, like fantasy football. Yeah. What, what the whole idea of fantasy football was? Now I'm watching games that because With I with a I, different I, because I have an interest in another it. Another interest besides what was just on the page. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it's like I would never normally watch this game. Would you not? Ne- would you ever normally as a five year old? read about what it means to be a good person probably not no but you give them an interest and then you can put the meaning in there right and so we're going back as adults and we're going to try to look at it from that perspective and little side note christian podcast we do think this is a nice little mental helping game of how i believe we're meant to read the bible which is through stories meaning yes but a lot more intricate right this is like this is practice. This is easy, digestible practice right. for. All right, now get through a very intense Bible right. Bible chapter, and what was the meaning? Right. What was the meaning? So today we're reading the Tooth Book, um, which has a big walrus on the front, which is my favorite animal, <laughs> um, which is awesome. And uh, off the bat, the illustration looks a little different. It does. But I'm seeing it says uh, written as Theo Lesig. Which is okay. another one of Dr. Seuss's pen names. Okay. The pen name he uses when he's writing but not illustrating. As a little hint. Yeah. So if you ever see a book by Theo Lesig or Dr. Seuss writing as Theo Lesig, just know the the book is his or the words are his. Mm-hmm. The illustrations are not. Right. 
illustrated by John Mateo. <sighs> Here we go. The tooth book. Who has teeth? Well, look around and you will find out who. You'll find that redhead uncles do. Policemen do and zebras too. And unicycle riders do. And camels and their drivers do. Even little girls named Ruthie all have teeth. All Ruths are toothy. Shout out Ruth. That's funny. Teeth, you find them everywhere, on mountaintops and in the air. And if you care to poke around, you'll even find them underground. You'll find them east, west, north, and south. You'll find them in a lion's mouth. Teeth, they are very much in style. They must be very much worthwhile. They come in handy when you chew, says Mr. Donald Driscoll Drew. That's why my family grew a few. They come in handy when you smile, says Smile and Sam the Crocodile. They come in handy in my job, says High Trapezer Mike McCobb. If I should ever lose a tooth, I'd lose my wife, and that's the truth. Teeth come in handy when you speak, says news broadcaster Quincy Queek. Without my teeth, I'd talk like ducks and only broadcast quacks and clucks. You're lucky that you have your teeth, says a sad, sad snail named Simon Sneath. I don't have one. I can never smile, like Smile and Sam the Crocodile. Clams have no teeth, says Pam the Clam. I cannot eat hot dogs or ham. No teeth at all, says Pam the Clam. I cannot eat roast leg of lamb or peanuts, pizzas, popcorn, spam. Not even huckleberry jam. Without teeth, we can't play trombones, says a jellyfish named Jimbo Jones. I have no teeth, says Hilda Hen, but women do, and so do men. So I have happy news for you. You will grow two sets, set one, set two. You will lose set number one, and when you do, it's not much fun. But then you'll grow set number two, 32 teeth and all brand new, 16 downstairs and 16 more upstairs on the upper floor. And when you get your second set, that's all the teeth you'll ever get. So don't chew down trees like beavers do. If you try, you'll lose set number two. And don't be dumb like Mr. Glotz. Don't break your teeth on tying knots. And don't be dumb like Katie Klops. Don't try to chew off bottle tops. Don't gobble junk like Billy Billings. They say his teeth have 50 fillings. They sure are handy when you smile, so keep your teeth around a while. And never bite your dentist when he works inside your head. Your dentist is your teeth's best friend. Bite someone else instead. The end. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I thought you were going to tell us about the illustrator. You want me to read the illustrator <laughs> part? Is that why you bought the, the Yeah, the because otherwise I could have got $10 off. <clears throat> so this is a little after notes. Um, Dr. Seuss, who was known as Theodore Geisel when he wasn't writing or drawing, wrote a, and illustrated 45 books for children and their lucky parents. Their lucky parents. <laughs> but sometimes Dr. Seuss liked to write books and have someone else draw their pictures. For those books, he used the pen name Theo Lesig, which is Geisel spelled backwards. All right, now we're talking about Joe Mateo, who is the illustrator. Joe Mateo has drawn the pictures for many children's books. In fact, the tooth book was his 100th book. He was wildly excited to work on a book by Dr. Seuss. I'm still like, trying to like, find like, the rhyme. Oh, uh, right, cadence. right. Calling him one of the real geniuses of our field. Facts. Mr. Mateo lived in Brooklyn, Connecticut, where he likes to ride bicycles, cook, and play ragtime music on the piano. I wonder if he's still alive. We'll have to look it up after the show. Um, yeah, I just like that last little piece about, about the illustrator because, again, I hope that um, Dr. Seuss stays as popular as he is. I feel like he had a resurgence. I feel like there was a time where he was kind of under the radar and then maybe some movies were made and stuff like that, but he came back up. Yeah. But, um, you know, to, to see this this um, illustrator, obviously very well known in the industry, had illustrated 100 books. So honored to be able to illustrate a Dr. Seuss you book. called him a genius. Yeah. yeah. So that's really good what's my thought is that what you're asking yeah about the tooth book which seems on the surface it just seems like a great book for children who um need to be taught how to be a human <laughs> you're gonna yeah, yeah. get teeth and and they're gonna fall out and don't let the second pair fall out but what i wanted to what what, what i was picking off of it was you're going through the book and, and just saying <clears throat> everyone has teeth and they're naming all the types of people and animals that have teeth and it seems like everybody has teeth yeah and um and it's kind of like taken for granted like of yeah. course every everything has teeth 
Um, so that's the first, like, I think two thirds of the book. And then, the, and then you have the parts where it's like a snail and a clam. Wait a minute. These don't have teeth. Yeah. The rooster doesn't have teeth. And then you're like, oh yeah, everybody doesn't have teeth. Um, and then, and then you come back out and then they start talking about talking about taking care of your teeth. And I feel like it just went back to the superficial thing. Yeah. But like I said, because I'm forcing myself, I might've just thought it was, he wrote it. Yeah. The dentist council of America paid him or something, but if I force myself, I just would say when we do have to keep in mind, a lot of people say, and we say sometimes too, like, well, everybody knows that part of the Bible or everybody knows or everyone has shoes or everyone, you know, something yeah. that is so widespread, normalized. Yeah. Not, it's never always. It's never everyone has it. Yeah. And just a maybe, but any, did you find anything in no, the tooth I, book? Yeah, I agree with that full fledged. And I, I definitely felt the same. Because the the snail or the clam, I think, even spoke. They were speaking negatively about not having teeth. Yes, they were. They can't yeah. smile. And I thought you could smile. And I, or I I can't eat these certain things. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think that's why I like it. So it, the, it starts off with a very general, overarching comment: everyone has teeth. Right. Everyone has teeth, and it's so great to have teeth. Yeah. Then you find people that don't have teeth, and now they feel bad about not having teeth. Right. But then you go a step further. And it starts talking about taking care of your teeth. Right. And you're saying you have to treat your teeth differently. Don't bite a tree like a beaver. Right. And so then you start being like, it's not all the same. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, Oh, right. You're, you're trying to make a broad claim of we're all this. Because I see that we all have teeth. We we all match. Yes. And it's like, not really. And so then you have to, you have to like, it, it goes part of that. I think like trying to be part of like, a bigger group and not distinguishing yourself and it's like yeah well that on that, first glance that beaver does have teeth you can't use your teeth the same way they can right you you can't use your teeth the same way a walrus can right and then there's nothing wrong with that like and you don't want to break your teeth but they don't they need to do that right and then the clams or, or the, the snails that don't have teeth well they don't need teeth like they're doing their own thing right so i i think it's there's this idea of you know, earlier we talked about we like being part of something and it's like that's the distinguishing factor that I think we need to keep in mind is we are individuals and you don't want to get too lost in the idea of I'm part of something to think you're that you are in the same position I can do this because that person's doing this right nor should you want to if they all have teeth I must be missing out right it's it's yes teeth is a grouping that a lot of people can share but it doesn't take away the individuality of right. one's own path, one's own use. The, the snail's not missing out for not having that teeth. You're not missing out for not being able to chew a tree down. Right. We all need to take care of what we have. Yes. And and, and celebrate our, our you know similarities and our differences. But at the end of the day, it's all about doing what's best for us. And not just... Yeah. Teeth are not just teeth. We are not just whatever, fill in the blank. Right. You know, I'm not just a label. Oh, I have this. I'm part of this. It's, well, I'm, I'm I, I doesn't mean I'm the same as the other person. Yeah. And also it does give, um, you know, even with the walrus on the cover, it does give a, um, it does give you, you're a young mind, but anyone's mind really, you know, you, you, sometimes you do separate, we're humans and these are animals. Yeah. And it's like, that is a kind of a connecting point. Where you would look at something like, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't, don't kick the dog or don't, you know, we have similarities. Not that we're the same, same, but more importantly, I cannot believe Ruth is in there. I know. That's cool. That? That's crazy. Cause this book was, was bought for last week's. Oh, Dr. Seuss. I knew we skipped last week for right. a reason. We not skipped I it. I never knew we were doing the Ruth story yesterday. So it just lined up on this day on this day on this full moon night so that means you have to read this weekend you have to read the book of ruth because yes it's, it's only like four chapters the holy spirit is just like read the book of ruth it's only four chapters but yeah one more thing just to finish up that yeah. made me think about just so the, the cover you brought up yeah it's him looking at a walrus and pointing at their teeth right and so i want to i want to bring up um the snails again because i think that, was, that is a little key nugget there yeah that's was, important because they were putting themselves like the, down uh, for not crescendo having of the book for not having teeth I think the problem with like this like broad array of, of joining people together and feeling like you're being ostracized is or like ex- excluded from this teeth person 
those little man teeth are as different to those tusks oh. as they are to having no teeth at like the clam. You're right. You know what I mean? You're right. And so it's like they're, they're putting in a group and, oh, I'm missing out. But you're all different. Right. Just because you're pointing at something, those aspects are just as different right. as you to not have them. And then if there was a shell book, the the, the person would, would miss out. because that, the, one, the one quote which I love to use um, is the Einstein quote, which I did think about when they brought up the clams, mm-hmm. which is, if you judge a, a fish's ability to swim, or if you judge a monkey and a fish on their ability to swim, the fish will always think they're uh, an idiot. But it's everyone has their own strengths. Right, right. And I think that really goes to this. It's they're all everyone's different, even right. if you're, you're you're judging it on the same criteria. Well, that's of the thing. Teeth. Like, what are you focusing on? And 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 that's the thing. If somebody's focusing on something that you don't have, well, that's okay because if we're focusing on this, it's a whole different story. Exactly. Exactly. But that's it, guys. We did it. We made it through a full week of podcasts. It used to be a norm, but hey, small celebration. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's for the prayers that the Thank people... Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's from those prayers. They finally came true. Um, peace. Okay. <laughs>